Hey there, my name is Angela. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be comparing the Canon EF-EOS M mount adapter to the Viltrox EF-EOS M2 speed booster. Here we go. I would like to just jump right into this comparison video, but before I get started, I would like to let you know that I'm going to be using the Nifty 50, aka the Canon EF 50mm lens to demonstrate the difference between these two mounts. The reason being that most new Canon M50 users are probably looking at this lens when it comes to buying a mount adapter. So. The Nifty 50 is what I'll be using. So let's get into it. First things first, let's talk about the price for each of these. So the Canon mount comes out to $185. Luckily for me, last year I was able to find it on Amazon Renewed for $104, but Amazon Renewed is kind of like a first come for a serve basis. It's based on how many people are returning things that can be renewed and then resold. So at the moment that I'm recording this video, it is not available on Amazon Renewed and the price is $185. As for the Speed Booster, on Amazon you can find it at $156. By the way, I'm going to put the links down below in the description so you can click and see for yourself and see what it's priced at at the time that you're watching this video. Now let's move on to design. So when you first look at these mount adapters, they look very similar on the exterior. However, once you open them up, your mind will be slightly blown, I know mine was, to see that the Viltrox Speed Booster actually has a piece of glass in it. So the Speed Booster weighs in at 145 grams and the Canon mount weighs in at 110 grams. That's minus the caps for each of these. The reason why the Speed Booster is a bit heavier is because of that glass in it, but that glass is what gives it all its powers and really differentiates it from the normal mount adapter. And here is how. If you are a Canon M50 user, then you know that it is not a full-framed camera. However, this lens, the Nifty 50, is built for a full-frame camera and the mount adapter, the regular mount adapter, doesn't really accommodate for that. So when you use the mount adapter, the Canon mount adapter, with the Nifty 50 on your Canon M50, it simply just connects the camera to the lens. It doesn't manipulate the light to prevent a crop factor due to it being a full frame lens on a not full frame camera. So I tried to make a little doodle earlier to demonstrate the difference between the speed booster and the Canon mount adapter. And here's what I came up with. That right there is my Nifty 50 illustrated so finely and the regular mount adapter and the camera sensor. So with the regular mount adapter, the light as illustrated in the green marker, will hit the sensor as though the sensor is full frame. So there's gonna be light that is gonna be hitting on the edges of the sensor that just gets lost. That light isn't being read by the sensor. So when you use the regular mount adapter with the Nifty 50 on a Canon M50, a lot of the imagery around the edges is gonna be lost and you're gonna have more of a cropped photo. So now here is what a speed booster does. Rather than lose light around the edges, it condenses light and focuses it on the sensor. Kind of like a magnifying glass when you hold it up and get sunlight through it and it really concentrates on something until it lights on fire. That's what the speed booster is doing in a less aggressive way to your camera sensor. And like I said, this reduces the crop factor. So earlier today, I went out and got some footage and photos to demonstrate the difference between the speed booster mount adapter and the normal mount adapter so that you can have an idea of how much crop factor is reduced by the speed booster. I also got some comparison footage with the kit lens set at 45 meters just in case some of you who are watching only have a kit lens and don't really know what the Nifty 50 looks like in the first place. So 
here's that footage from earlier. All right, so to demonstrate the difference that the focal length is for the speed booster and for the regular mount adapter. I have Kristen here today. She's gonna be my subject slash helper. Um, <laughs> by the way, Kristen streams on Twitch, so if you want to get yes, to know sir. her better, you can <laughs> check her out here. Where's what is your Twitch name? My Twitch name is Hazel Lives. So Twitch TV slash Hazel Lives, and I'll be there. And I'm streaming. What do you stream though? I stream chess, Minecraft. Um, you know, sometimes I feel the zombies a little bit. So, I don't know, it depends on the day. Yeah, so it's check her boring. out if you're ever, <laughs> ever interested in that. But what we did today, we made some circles on the ground. The orange one is the one that Kristen's gonna be in the entire time. The yellow line that's like the next one over is five feet away from her circle. And then the outer circle, the blue one, is 10 feet away from her. And what I'm gonna do is kind of circle the perimeter with the different focal lengths and the mount adapter, the speed booster, and the kit lens, just so you can kind of have an idea of what the difference between them are. And yeah, so let's get to it. To start off, I'm gonna show you some videos that I got from the yellow circle, five feet away from Kristen. The next round of videos were taken from the blue circle 10 feet away from Kristen. While there, I also snapped some photos of Kristen so that you can see them side by side. Here are some shots five feet away from her where you can tell that the cannon adapter is much more cropped in. And here are some shots 10 feet away from her where you can tell that the speed booster has a much wider shot. So that's the difference you will see between the Canon mount adapter and the Viltrox speed booster adapter. And personally, when I was out there shooting, I could really see a difference between the two as I was switching back and forth, especially with this photo right here. So on the left is a photo taken with the regular Canon mount adapter. And on the right is a photo taken with the Viltrox speed booster adapter. And you can tell that it really does widen the shot and you get more information in there and personally I kind of like that however I think if you are in a situation that you're able to take a few steps back you can get a similar crop with just the regular mount adapter but you'll have to be further away from your subject but with that being said the speed booster does way more than just impact the focal length of your lens it also increases the brightness of your photos so because the light is concentrated on the surface of your sensor it makes your photos brighter and what this means is you're able to get a lower aperture with the speed booster. And honestly, when I first bought the speed booster, I didn't do too much research of my own. I just thought, you know what? People keep asking me about this speed booster. I wanna see what's up. So I got one. And the first thing I noticed when I put it on my camera with my Nifty 50 was, holy crap, the aperture is now 1.2. Isn't it usually 1.8? That was my thought switched it up, looked on the lens, and I was like, yep, I'm not going crazy. It's usually 1.8. This speed booster dropped it down to 1.2. And that's pretty cool because that opens up some opportunities for low light situations. So I also got some footage to demonstrate this for you guys. This first video was taken with the kit lens and at 45 millimeters, its aperture is 6.3. So you might as well just use your iPhone at this point. The sky still had some light in it, which you can see more so using the Nifty 50 and the regular Canon adapter. But oh my God, the speed booster kind of craps on all of their performances with its 1.2 aperture. And when you see the videos side by side like this, it becomes more obvious that the speed booster is better suited for low light. Now it's time for my final thoughts. So when it comes to these two 
mount adapters. The Canon mount adapter has served me so well in the year that I've had it and what you don't know doesn't really hurt you and I didn't really know what I was missing out on when it came to having a speed booster instead of a normal mount adapter. But now that I know what I was missing out on, I don't think I can return this and be happy with that decision. So I'm gonna keep both of them, mostly because my Canon mount adapter is an EF, but also an EFS adapter. So I can use it with my 10 to 18 millimeter Canon EFS lens, whereas the speed booster only works for EF lenses. So I cannot use my wide angle lens with this, which was honestly a little bit disappointing when I got it in the mail. One of the reasons why I thought I would be able to use it with an EFS lens is because if you look closely in the Amazon photo, you can see that that little white square is in the photo on the mount adapter, whereas it's not here in real life. And with the Canon mount adapter, it has a little white square for lining up an EFS lens to mount it on. So I kind of just saw that image and thought, oh, it's multifunctional, just like my normal Canon mount, but that's not the case. So maybe be aware of that if you're interested in getting a speed booster as well. And yeah, other than that, I am very satisfied with what it does for me when it comes to my comes down to my nifty 50, especially with the wider shot. I really I think that's my favorite part of this. But the fact that it drops down the aperture also got me very excited. So I hope that this video kind of helps you understand the difference between the two mount adapters and maybe helps you make a decision as to which one is better suited for you. If you think it does, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye.